Welcome to my 2009 Honda Element car conversion tour. I purchased him in July of 2017 and I moved into him in August of 2017. This is actually the second iteration of the conversion. So the first iteration, I'll put a picture here. Very simple, very basic. I thought I was going on a six month road trip. I didn't know I was gonna be doing this for years. So I went with a basic platform. I had Walmart crates, I think, on this side. And it was, again, very basic, but it worked. And it helped me fall in love with this lifestyle. And then in May of 2019, I redid the conversion and it hasn't changed since. I cook everything on my Coleman. This is my stove. And then in here I have pots, pans, utensils, propane. This is like my kitchen utensils area. This is my pantry down here. And that's where I store, you know, non-perishable items, goods, things that will last a long time. So this, this cabinet, and then there's another cabinet back there. They're held on with simple uh, magnetic little latches. So when you close it, and as you can see, there is another drawer back there. That's just extra camping gear, backpacks. So my bed platform, actually, I made it so that it basically folds up into a couch, but I will let you know that I do not do that. That is something I would change. If I was redoing this, I would make just a regular bed platform and I would probably have, instead of like cupboards, I would have a pull out um, kitchen like I think a lot of people do. So as you can see, there is two different colors of wood. This is actually my original bed frame from when I first left. We basically cut it a little bit shorter and then we just duplicate it, which is why this side has this as well. So that's why they're different colors. <laughs> but that folds up. And then what I did do here, basically I wanted to be able to have the passenger seat move uh, in case I had a friend who wanted to travel with me. So I didn't, I wanted to make sure I could adjust the passenger seat and that my bed platform wasn't set and, you know, only short people could enter my car. So this does actually uh, fold back like that so that I can move this back to give more space. I don't have to do it often though because I don't have a lot of friends, so, <laughs> but I have the option, which is nice. I didn't, I was too lazy to take the sheets off, but yeah, I mean, it can be a couch, but I never do this. So it's unnecessary if I'm being honest. These are my clothing bins, my storage bins, basically. They are target boxes, the cubed boxes. And then I have, these are shirts. This is socks, underwear, sports bras. This is pants, shorts, things like that. This is my junk drawer. Every home needs a junk drawer. And then I have towels. And then this is my like long sleeve shirts, sweaters, flannels, everything like that. And then my sweatshirt, jacket, things like that. Uh, the way that they are held on is basically they have a hook in the back and all of the cubes come with this this hole here. I think this is actually supposed to be the front traditionally, but I saw the hole and I thought if I put a hook on the back of the cube, then this, when I put it in, the hook goes through it so that it can't come out. And that is how those cubes stay secured. This is my Thermarest zero degree sleeping bag. I also have a 40 degree sleeping bag. Um, yeah, that is my only source of heat in the winter time is my sleeping bags. I don't have a heating system. I don't have a Mr. Buddy heater. I have absolutely nothing. I just have sleeping bags. And I have slept in down to negative 27 degrees in my car before. And been completely fine. I put my sleeping bag 
my 40 degree sleeping bag inside of my zero degree sleeping bag and I wore like my puffy jacket and some layers to bed and I was fine. So you don't need a heating system or anything to comfortably live in your car. It's actually way more difficult in summer. You really, for me at least, because I don't have air conditioning when my car is off or anything like that, I just kind of follow the weather. So it's turning into summer, it's getting warmer. So I went up to the Pacific Northwest and then in the winter and things like that, I tend to stay more in the desert. I think they call them snowbirds. That's what I've become. Just following the weather to make sure living in my car is as comfortable as possible because you know, I don't have insulation. It is just, if it's hot outside, it's hot in my car. If it's cold outside, it's cold in my car but you make it work and I have not died. So it works, but I do highly recommend if you are going with like the no heating system, get a good sleeping bag. It makes a world of difference. So underneath my bed on this side, I have more storage, more camping gear, a jack stand, a saw. This is my laundry basket, which is currently empty because I actually did my laundry, so go me. And then if you take that out, I have camera stuff and my drone that is all the way back there. These two water jugs are what I use for my showers usually when there's no Planet Fitness or anything. So I just refill them with whatever river water I can find and then heat them. These are my drinking water gallons that I just store down there. I had, when I first started out, I had one of those big blue like seven gallon water jugs <laughs> and I realized that um, it, it was really heavy to carry and I was weak and lugging around one big seven gallon jug versus little one gallons it's a big difference so I just switched to I buy the plastic jugs but then I refill them and refill them and refill them for months and then eventually once I feel like you know, they're getting a little banged up, I'll get new ones. But I've just found it's a lot easier for me, it's a lot more convenient, and honestly, it's a lot easier to fill up. I have my two solar lights that I'm charging, I guess. This is my mini library. <laughs> I have Pride and Prejudice. I have the last two, book five and book six of Lord of the Rings, because if you don't know, there's actually six books, it's not three. I have The Children of Hurin, which is another Tolkien novel that was never finished, but his son, I believed, put it together. On the driver's side, I have nothing. This is where I store my bigger bottles of stuff, shampoo, deodorant, perfume, dry shampoo. You know, important things to make me look human. On this side, I have some jackets hanging up. I have a soda stream because I really, really like seltzer and a soda stream is really, really nice to have and honestly saves me a lot of money. This is my cooler. It's just a basic bag cooler. Uh, don't use it all the time, but you know, use it sometimes. It's nice to have just in case I want cheese. <laughs> it's really mostly for milk for lattes. Uh, further down, I have my shoe compartment and where I keep beer, apparently. Forgot about that. But yes, shoes. Right now my boots are here, but once winter is officially over, I will move them into my other storage with like my backpacks and stuff like that. And I have, there's bear spray too. That just goes places, that doesn't have a home. I personally really like being able to access my entire conversion from the front of my car. I know a lot of the trucks with the shells and stuff like that, you have to like get out of your vehicle and walk to the back. For me personally, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a female. I just feel a lot safer knowing that if anything is to happen or if anything did happen, I don't have to get out of my vehicle to walk around to drive away. I can just climb in the front seat and leave not that anything's happened uh knock on knock on wood but it is something that I do think about traveling by myself as a woman 
uh, you do have to think about it. So I don't think it's a bad thing to just have that awareness and maybe a little bit of paranoia. I also sleep with a stun gun and pepper spray and an emergency button and like a, a beeper thing that when you press it, it makes an ear splitting noise very loud. Uh, but yeah, I sleep with all those things next to me every night just because, just in case, you know? If something happens, I have something to try to defend myself with. I have considered getting a gun, however, just traveling, living in a car, crossing states, possibly going into other countries, it's just a little bit too much for me. For anyone who is starting out on this lifestyle or anything like that, I mean, I cried for the first probably two months of living in my car. I was terrified. I didn't know where to sleep. And this was back in 2017. So this was before the big van life craze, the big kind of like normalcy of doing this lifestyle. It really wasn't that popular in 2017. There wasn't that much information online about it. It was a lot less accessible as a lifestyle. So I'm not trying to be like, I was there before it was cool, <laughs> but I was there before it was normalized. So the first couple months of travel before I understood where I could sleep was terrifying. But now looking back, oh my gosh, it was so much easier. <laughs> I feel very safe in Elrond. I love it. <laughs> I'm very obsessed with my car, as most people are who have Honda Elements. We're kind of a cult. It's a phenomenal car. So this uh, is a curtain. It's a blackout curtain that basically... This is what I use to block out light and so you can't see into my vehicle from the front of it so that I don't have to make coverings for all those windows. I just do this. And because it's gray, it kind of like blends in at night. You can't really see it. And then it has at the end, it's a, it's basically a metal, uh, it's basically a metal pole with the endings hammered down so that they fit into the slots on either side. And then that's just how it stays up. So I right now have three different iterations of my blackout curtain. These are my original blackout curtains from 2017. This is from 2017. When I first started traveling, it's black on the back and you can actually still see the Velcro on it. So I used to have these and I would attach them to the windows with Velcro. So adhesive Velcro. You can actually still see. This is, this is adhesive that's left over from that that I can't get off. But yeah, so original curtains. These are the finished ones. So they have the original blackout curtains for the shape. They have reflective on the other side, and then I have duct tape around them. And these are nice because you can kind of just shove them into the corners of your window to get them to stay. And then I also have this for my back window, which is half done. So it has the blackout on one side, the reflector on the other side, but I didn't do the duct tape yet. But you can still cram it into the corners, so it works. So I have a system that works it needs help and I just haven't gotten around to it yet even though I have a lot of free time I am one of those people that if it works I'm not probably gonna improve it until I feel like it's too inconvenient that goes in the back now this this is the problem one this is the one I actually really need to fix because I fucked up when I was cutting it so the shape isn't correct um, so I have to use my sweatshirt <laughs> and then I go like that to hold it in. It works. It's just not perfect. I actually love this about the back windows. They're like truck windows. So even when the car is off, you can just pop them out like that, which is just nice to have airflow. 
from the outside when I do have the blackout curtains up, uh, as you can see, as you can see, you can't see in my car at all. So it does work. And that's why I actually did put the blackout curtains on <clears throat> the outside instead of having those shiny reflector on the outside because when you have the shiny reflector on the outside it's very obvious that they're up and they're there and that probably someone's in the car whereas with the blackout curtains it kind of just looks like my car is really fucking tinted so it's not as obvious that someone is in my car <laughs> so i don't know if you can see here but these are zip ties back here we have zip ties Back there. Basically, my entire conversion is held against my car and stabilized by zip ties. <laughs> zip ties are fantastic. So yeah, zip ties hold my entire conversion in place and I've had no issues with them. So zip ties and I think I used a, are they called eye hole? screws they have like a loop at the end so you like I, the, you screw it into the wood and then there's a loop on the end so i put the zip tie through that and then the element has so many little like random like these things i don't know why they exist but they're helpful <coughs> i need water <laughs> yeah. so yeah with my conversion it's simple it's basic it's as stealthy as possible i don't even have a roof rack i have nothing on the outside of my vehicle that suggests that I live in my vehicle. I don't, that's why I didn't do stickers. I didn't do anything. My main purpose for my conversion and for this lifestyle was to have a vehicle that was as stealthy as possible, that blended in as well as possible, and that didn't look like someone lived in it. That was very important to me. Does that mean that it's a little more difficult? Sure. Um, maybe a little more uncomfortable, probably, but it has worked for me, this vehicle, for almost six years. We have been to 48 states together. I've been to Alaska, but I flew there. We've been, you know, all, all over. <laughs> also to be clear, I did not build this myself. Absolutely not. My dad is a carpenter. He already had, you know, his shop in the garage. He had all of the tools. He had all of the knowledge. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I did this by myself because I didn't. <laughs> I designed it and then we built it together and he was incredibly helpful. Thank you. I love you. Um, I, you know, he did the cutting and the, the, the hard stuff. I did the, the sanding and the, you know, monotonous stuff, but it was a team effort. And then my mom also did my original blackout curtains. She did all of the cutouts and the shape of them and she did them perfectly. I messed them up later. She did great. She also did my bed. She cut, cause this is, this is a four inch foam. Did I even say that? <laughs> I'm so bad at this. This is a four inch foam mattress that was basically cut to size. I think we used an electric knife, but uh, yeah, my mom cut this to size. She also made the cover underneath here. This cover that comes off, it's washable. Um, she also gave me my linen sheets. Thanks. So again, I'm never going to sit here and be like, I built this myself because I didn't. I came up with the design and then as a family, we made it together. And like I said, this entire conversion, all of this can be removed, which I actually had to do, uh, six months ago when I had to get the rear struts and stuff fixed for my suspension. I had to take my conversion out. So the whole conversion completely comes out. There are no holes drilled in my vehicle at all. And because the element is designed so that the back seats actually, there's a button you press and they just pop right out. I can just put, the, I still have the back seats. They're in my parents' basement. I could just theoretically put the back seats back in my vehicle and I would have a regular car and there would be absolutely no evidence that there was ever a conversion in this car, which is one of the key things that I was very, very focused on doing. I did not want to drill any holes in my car. And I didn't, I found other ways around it. And the element is the perfect color to that. So I'm gonna end this because <laughs> I'm like filming this in a friend's driveway. So someone's mowing their lawn. I'm a bounce. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see you guys in a minute. I'll see you. 
I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>